Welcome to the Genealogy News from Geniatopia. I'm Patty Roy, also known as Dinah Larkham in Second Life. Today is Wednesday, August 9th, 2017, and this is episode 106. MyHeritage has announced that they've acquired Millennia Corporation, the makers of Legacy Family Tree software and Legacy Family Tree webinars. The acquisition will introduce MyHeritage users to Legacy Family Tree webinars and provide Legacy users with improved resources and access to new services. Legacy Family Tree webinars started in 2010 and plans are to continue the webinars. MyHeritage will be upgrading the platform used for the webinars so that larger audiences can be supported. Right now, webinars are limited to 1,000 live viewers. MyHeritage will be promoting the webinars to its own users to increase the audience. They will have more resources to bring on more speakers, and they will receive more exposure from the increased audience and higher royalty rates. Legacy Family Tree software has been around for 20 years, and it will be around for many more years to come. This software only runs on Windows. Improvements are being planned that will be backed by MyHeritage technical resources. The next version of the software will include an optional capability to sync your family tree to MyHeritage. You will also be able to make updates to your database using the MyHeritage mobile app. MyHeritage will still continue to offer and develop their Family Tree Builder software. This program allows you to sync your desktop tree with your tree at MyHeritage. Family Tree Builder will not be merged with Legacy software. Users of Legacy Family Tree software will get discounts on MyHeritage services and DNA kits. These discounts will be revealed sometime during the week of August 14th. All the existing staff at Legacy will be retained and will now be working at MyHeritage in their existing roles. To celebrate the acquisition, Legacy Family Tree software is being offered at 50% off. That makes the price $17.48, and it will be available at that price through Sunday, August 13th. Also on sale for 50% off is a one-year webinar membership or extension if you have an existing membership. The cost for the membership is $24.98, And again, that price is good until August 13th. In a few weeks, there will be a webinar about the MyHeritage and Legacy acquisition. During the webinar, anyone is welcome to ask questions and get answers. Another news announcement for MyHeritage is that they have surpassed 8 billion records on SuperSearch. SuperSearch searches all the records at MyHeritage and all the family trees that are on the site automatically and lets you know about the matches. MyHeritage counts records based on how many names are in them. So, for example, a marriage record would contain the name of the bride and groom, and it's counted as two records. Each photo is considered one record, and for newspapers or yearbooks, each page is counted as one record. Now for some new records at FamilySearch. A new browsable image collection that's been added is the Texas Gonzales County Death Records, 1863-1970. Next, these collections have index records added to an existing collection. Argentina, Buenos Aires, Catholic Church records, 1635-1981. Argentina, Entre Rios, Catholic Church records, 1764-1983. Brazil, Pernambuco, Civil Registration, 1804-2014. Brazil, Paiu, Civil Registration, 1875-2013. Brazil, Sao Paulo, Immigration Cards, 1902-1980. British Columbia, Victoria Times, Birth, Marriage, and Death Notices, 1901-1939. California, San Diego Passenger List, 1904-1952. California, San Francisco Immigration Office Special Inquiry Records, 1910-1941. Dominican Republic Civil Registration, 1801-2010. Ecuador Catholic Church Records, 1565-2011. Idaho Divorce Index, 1947-1961. Idaho Southern Counties Obituaries, 1943-2013. Illinois Cook County Deaths, 1878-1994. Italy Asti Civil Registration, uh, various years there, 1803-1814 and 1911-1935. Italy Bergamo Civil Registration, 1866-1901. Louisiana Deaths, 1850-1875 and 1894-1960. Netherlands Archival Indexes Miscellaneous Records, South Dakota Department of Health Index to Births 1843 to 1914 and Marriages 1950 to 2016, Utah Mormon Pioneer Overland Travel Database 1847 to 1868 
and Washington Death Index, 1855 to 2014. And those were collections that have indexed records added to an existing collection. This next collection has had index records and images added to an existing collection, and that's for Paraguay, Catholic Church Records, 1754 to 2015. And these next two collections have added images to an existing collection, Paraguay Miscellaneous Records, 1509 to 1977, and Washington County Marriages, 1855 to 2008. Ancestry has added new workhouse records for England and Wales, in 1861, it was required to record the name, time spent in the workhouse, and the reason for admission to the workhouse. This requirement were, was for those who lived in the workhouse for five years or more, and there are over 14,000 people in this collection. Every year, more births, marriages, and death records can be made available online once the time limit has passed for privacy. Recently, Ancestry added marriage records for Ontario, Canada for the year 1935, and deaths for that same area for 1945. Ancestry has added an index to the Royal Air Force Airmen Records, 1918 to 1940. The Royal Air Force was formed toward the end of the First World War in England. To view the actual records for this index, you will need a subscription to Fold 3. Another new collection at Ancestry is for school admission and discharges in London for the years 1912 to 1918. There is information on almost 100,000 students. Another new collection contains admission and discharges for the poor law school districts in London for the years 1852 to 1918. Find My Pass has added lots of records for Somerset. There are more than 2 million baptisms, marriage bans, over 100 million transcripts for marriage records, and more than 1.5 million transcripts for burials in Somerset. Over 2,000 additional records have been added to the Monmouthshire burials. More memorial inscriptions have been added for Yorkshire, and a new collection of monumental inscriptions has been added for Staffordshire. Monumental inscriptions contain the individual's name, birth and death date, as well as residence. Some may contain the name of other family members. There's a new collection of Linlith Gaucher poorhouse records. These are records from Scotland and give the details of more than 15,000 people who were admitted to the poorhouse between 1859 and 1912. Also for Linlith Goucher, Scotland, are burial records for the years 1860 to 1975. Find My Pass has added records to the collection of Philadelphia Roman Catholic baptisms and marriages. For New Jersey and the United States, records have been added for baptisms and other church records for the township of Hanover and Morris County. There are over 4 million new records for United States marriages in the states of Nevada and California. They've added over a million articles to their British newspapers collection, and nine brand new titles have been added. And over a million articles have been added to the Irish newspapers collection, and four brand new titles have been added. 23andMe customers, who have elected to participate in research, can now see which published discoveries they individually made possible. They can see how their research responses and DNA were used in which published discoveries they personally helped. The in-depth genealogist, publishes a digital magazine, and now they are launching the IDG Academy. This will be an online learning experience to expand skills in genealogy. The classes will mostly be taught by writers of the magazine, as well as other professional genealogists. They will be using the Moodle platform. This is a learning management system used to set up classes online. Classes will consist of discussion boards and synchronous activities. There will be videos and assignments focusing on weekly topics. All classes will be four weeks in length, and new classes will start every month except for December. Each class will cost $99 and can be paid using PayPal. Those who subscribe to the Going In Depth magazine will receive a 10% refund for each class. The first class to be offered will be Genealogy Basics and Beyond Part 1. It will be taught by Valerie ecker Lair, who has been teaching this course for 25 years. Valerie is a full-time professional genealogist and this class will start on September 11th. Clues is a program to organize your documents for easy retrieval and analysis. It's developed by Ancestral Systems. The current version of Clues is version 3. Ancestral Systems has announced that future updates through version 4 will now be free of charge to all users who have an active update support as of July 23, 2016, or who have purchased Clues after that date. You no longer have to annually renew and pay for update support. 
If your update support has expired, then you will need to purchase a new license in order to receive future updates. Ancestral Systems will return to charging for major upgrades beginning with version 5. Twile is an online service that combines interactive timelines with photos, text, and video. Many people can collaborate on a timeline. There's a new version of the Twile timeline. The changes that have been made to make things clearer, brighter, and easier to use. The milestones have more color, the photos are large, larger I should say, and you can see more about each event without having to click on it and open it. Events show how many photos are inside for each event. Any descriptions or comments you add to the events will show on the timeline, and that makes it easier to tell the story of the event. Family Tree Magazine has listed on its website the 100 best, 101 I should say, best free websites for genealogy in 2017. This year's list includes only sites that don't charge a subscription or a pay-per-view fee. The sites are listed by category. The categories are big genealogy websites, online vital and grave records, military genealogy websites, genealogy immigration websites, genealogy map websites, old newspaper genealogy websites, genealogy library websites, U.S. genealogy websites, websites for sharing your genealogy, online genealogy technology tools, UK and Irish genealogy websites, international genealogy websites, genealogy social history websites, and online genealogy tips and help. The Federation of Genealogical Societies, or FGS, has announced that they have resumed working on the War of 1812 pension files. You may remember that they had a fundraising campaign going on to help digitize these files. At their conference last year, an anonymous donor donated enough money to complete the digitization. The recent announcement was to let everyone know that they have resumed document conservation of these files. That is a step that needs to be taken before the files can be digitized. Ancestry.com will be doing the image captures of these newly conserved documents beginning the second week of September. Once these images are captured, they will be added to Fold 3. The War of 1812 Pension Files project was delayed because of a security incident at the National Archives and Records Administration, or NARA, facility in St. Louis. Even though the pension files are located in Washington, D.C., NARA implemented new security and project protocols. These led to new costs, space, and completion date constraints on the project. FGS will be doing document conservation on pension files covering the surnames from M, starting with Moore, M-O-O-R-E, through Q. A new project plan will be put in place to continue work on the digitization of the rest of the surnames. This means that negotiations will be going on between NARA, Ancestry.com, and FGS in order to complete the project. The National Archives and Records Administration, or NARA, has entered into a new partnership agreement with the Daughters of the American Revolution, or DAR. The DAR is a nonprofit organization dedicated to promoting patriotism, preserving American history, encouraging education, and honoring the patriots of the Revolutionary War. NARA has many of these types of partnerships with other organizations, such as Ancestry.com, Family Search, and Find My Past. Basically, the partnership allows another organization to digitize and index documents found at NARA. Then the other organization has a certain amount of time to be able to charge for access to the digitized records. DAR has enhanced their website so that the public can find information about objects in the DAR Museum collection. This collection contains over 30,000 objects. They are stored in a database to keep track of all the information that is known about things such as paintings, furniture, clothing, textiles, and items made of ceramics, glass, and silver. They took digital photos of the objects so they could be seen on the website. You can search for objects or you can browse the collection. The U.S. Geological Survey, or USGS, has released a new enhancement to its TopoView mapping service. This lets users discover, interact, and download historical topographical maps. TopoView is a web application built on an open source mapping platform. It has tools and procedures that allow users to find historic maps from the map collection at USGS and compare those maps to modern day maps. The new version contains improvements and enhancements based on user comments and suggestions. Some new features include a new user interface that's faster and easier, Find maps with a variety of search terms, intuitive tools for comparing maps, ability to preview maps, and better filters and searchers. There is a video that explains all of these new features. There's a new website that shows photos from Niagara Falls. 
The photos show locations and how they changed over the years. The Niagara Falls Public Library launched the site on July 1st. The library staff will be adding new photographs to the website on an ongoing basis. The mobile version of the website includes detailed maps of where to find the locations. The New York Public Library has released Surveyor. This is a new tool that can be used to explore historical photographs on their website by location where they were taken. Titles don't always describe where the photo was taken. Surveyor will be used to crowdsource geotags of the photo collection. Everyone can contribute to determine the locations of the photos. They are starting out with 2,500 photos from five different collections. The International African American Museum in Charleston, South Carolina will open in early 2020. It will be located on the site where almost half of all enslaved Africans first arrived in America. The museum will include immersive interactive exhibits and multimedia experiences for visitors. It will be a gateway to historic sites in South Carolina's low country important to African American history. The museum will have a Center for Family History. It will be dedicated to celebrating and researching African American ancestry. The center will engage in genealogy education, original research, community archiving, public outreach, DNA testing, and collections. They still need to raise $12.5 million in private fundraising before they reach their goal. They recently received a $500,000 corporate investment from the Michelin Corporate Foundation. The $75 million museum has cleared Charleston's Board of Architectural Review. They just need to raise the rest of the money before starting to build. The Texas State Library and Archives Commission has digitized a series of collections from its holdings about the First World War and placed them at the Texas Digital Archive. There are three collections that document the participation of Texas soldiers in World War I. You can find diaries, rosters, correspondence, photographs, scrapbooks, and lots more. There have been lots more additions to Digital NC, the online library of primary sources from institutions across North Carolina. Here's a list of what's been added. The first 100 years of the Daily Tar Heel newspaper, covering the years 1893 to 1992. New directories from New Bern, North Carolina. More yearbooks from North Carolina School of Science and Mathematics. More yearbooks from Winterville High School. Yearbooks from Cape Fear Community College. Three yearbooks from Winchester Avenue High School. A scrapbook about Hurricane Hazel, which struck in October 1954. Newsletters in meeting minutes um, from the Society for the Preservation of Historic Oakwood. And more photos from Central Carolina Community College. The Columbia State University Archives has received a grant to allow it to digitize Civil War era letters and documents of General Henry Benning. Fort Benning was named after him. The collection will be keyword searchable for anyone to easily find information. The project will digitize approximately 120 documents, mostly letters from Benning, that were donated to the archives. Once complete, the project will be hosted on the Columbia State University Digital Archives website and the Digital Library of Georgia website. The National Endowment for the Humanities has announced the addition of two new partners to the National Digital Newspaper Program. Newspapers from Arkansas and Georgia will be digitized. The newspapers will be digitized from the Arkansas State Archives and the University of Georgia. It's estimated that it will take two years to complete the digitization. Once digitized, they will be found at the Chronicling America website. The goal is to have every state in U.S. territory represented at the site. So far, there are 45 states and one territory participating in the program. The Digital Library of Georgia is adding newspapers to its recently released Georgia Historic Newspapers website. They listed all the newspapers that will be added in the fall of 2017. These include many newspapers from Augusta, some student newspapers, and some previously released newspapers will be added to the new website. I'll have a link in the show notes where you can find the complete list of newspapers. The college newspaper from Union College, located in Schenectady, New York, has had many issues placed online. The newspaper archives date back to 1877. The years from 1877 to 2000 are available online through the Schaefer Library webpage. Plans are to convert the remaining years of the newspaper into a digital platform. The newspaper featured news about important campus issues, as well as local and national news. The Peterborough Town Library in New Hampshire will make the region's historic newspapers accessible online through a digital archive. The first newspapers to be added to the archive are the Contu Cook News Transcript, the Peterborough Messenger, 
and the Peterborough Transcript. So far, newspapers up to the year 1898 are available. Plans are to add newspapers through 1934, and this should be completed by the fall of 2017. Eventually, the Peterborough Transcript will be digitized up to 2006, and the Mana I don't know how to say this, Monadnock Ledger Transcript will be digitized for the years 2006 to 2015. A newspaper from Cedar Rapids, Iowa, is being made available to the public online. The newspaper is The Gazette. So far, 2 million pages are available, with 1 million more images expected to be added over the course of the next 18 months. The Ontario Genealogical Society, or OGS, and the New York Genealogical and Biographical Society, or NYGMB, have announced discounts to their members to each other's societies. So OGS members will receive a 25% discount on annual membership to the NYGMB and a similar offer for the NYGMB members to join OGS. The two societies hope that this partnership will allow their members to gain access to more records and resources. There's a new augmented reality app for Kensington Market, which is located in Toronto. The app is called Toronto Kensington Market Hidden Histories. It was created as a project in the class at the University of Toronto Arts and Sciences. The app works by users holding their camera phones up to a building or, or a site that's been identified, and then the app displays archival video and digital content. A timeline pops up over the live building on the screen with historical information about the building. The app is only available for Android on Google Play. They hope to introduce an app for iOS in the future. There is also an online interactive map of the Kensington area on the project website, and it includes more than 30 other locations. The University of British Columbia has received a donation to digitize thousands of photographs and textual documents held in its archives and museums throughout the Okanagan Valley. The material to be digitized has been pre-selected by museum staff. The digitized collection will be freely available online sometime this fall. The UK subscription website, The Genealogist, has added directories from 1921 to its website. The directories cover 23 counties with over a million records. They are fully transcribed and searchable. I'll have a link in the show notes with more details about the areas that are covered in these directories. There's a new free website from the National Library of Wales that contains over 12,000 tithe maps with over 30,000 pages of indexed documents. Tithes were payments that were charged on land users. Originally, the payments were typically made using commodities like crops, wool, milk, and stock. These types of maps were produced between 1838 and 1850 to ensure that all tithes be paid with money instead of commodities. There's a new version of the website Free CEN. This is the website for the Volunteer Census Transcription Project for England, Scotland, and Wales. The site allows you to search for your UK ancestors using one database so you can trace them from 1841 to 1891. The new website uses responsive design, so it looks good on all devices. The Scottish Indexes website has added records for mental health patients across Scotland from 1868 to 1876. A team of volunteers has indexed the first 40,000 entries, and they are now available. The Emerald Ancestors website is a website for Northern Ireland and Ulster genealogy. It has some free resources, but for most of the things on the site, you will need a subscription, and it starts at £10 per month. They have recently updated the website. They've added some land records, baptismal and marriage records, and they've added a number of free resources. There is also a tree builder. The Irish Genealogical Research Society has added a new resource to its website. There is now a database index to some directories which were published between 1787 to 1837. There are three separate directories. The first has a variety of information relating to Ireland, details about mail and stagecoach timetables, an establishment list for the Army and Navy, details about schools, and more. The second is the English Court Registry. It lists royalty, nobility, parliamentarians, military and naval lists, the civil establishment, and so on. The third is the most useful to genealogists. It's the Wilson's Dublin Directory. This includes a very comprehensive list of Dublin's barristers, attorneys, medical practitioners, and all other professional professions. It also includes a list of the city's streets, lanes, and alleyways. There is a limited version of the database that is free to access, and full access is reserved for members only. It costs approximately $36 U.S. for the year. The Evangelical Church of Saxony records will be available on Archeon. 
This is a subscription website for church records in Germany. The first records will be uploaded in January 2018. However, the majority of the church books aren't even on microfilm. They will be digitizing the books and placing them online in the near future. The National Genealogical Society has completed digitizing all issues of the National Genealogical Society quarterly on its website. These are only available to members. NGS cost $65 per year. The Southern California Genealogical Jamboree has put out a call for presentations. This call pertains to the Jamboree, Genetic Genealogy Day, Writers' Conference, and the 2018 Jamboree Extension and Webinar Series programs. You must submit your proposal through their portal. You may submit up to six presentations, and you have until September 9th to submit presentations. Roots Tech will be held in February. They've announced some changes to the upcoming conference. This year, will, there will be a theme for the conference. The theme is Connect, Belong. It's meant to encompass what family history adds to our lives. Connecting and belonging is different for everyone. Family history can connect us and helps us feel a sense of belonging. Roots Tech will officially begin a day earlier than previous conferences. The first date will be Wednesday, February 28th. The day will be filled with class sessions with the general session beginning at 4.30 p.m. The Innovator Summit and Innovator Showdown will become the Innovation Showcase. It will be similar as in previous conferences where new technologies will be displayed. The showcase will be featured after the general session address from Steve Rockwood, CEO of FamilySearch International. After Wednesday's general session and innovation showcase, the Expo Hall will be open for two hours in the evening. If you will be attending Roots Tech, you can check in on Tuesday at noon to avoid the long lines on Wednesday. In order to gather more data about the conference, each classroom will have a scanner that will scan your badge when you enter. The innovation showcase is part of your Roots Tech pass. The Library of Congress will be having a free webinar series about World War I. It will be a five-part series of 40-minute talks. These online sessions are free and open to the public. The first webinar will be on August 22nd at 2 p.m. Eastern. The title will be Echoes of the Great War, American Experiences of World War I. In September, the webinar will be Over Here, Over There, Immigrant Veterans of World War I. Then in October, they will present Woodrow Wilson Chooses War. In November, the presentation is Lest Liberty Perish, Joseph Pennell in World War I, and in December the webinar will be Charles Hamilton Houston in World War I. Family Search will be holding a Nordic Family History Conference starting the week of September 11th. They have done these types of conferences before where people can attend the live sessions in Salt Lake City or you can watch the live sessions on your computer from home. On Monday they will talk about Nordic records and calendars, then on Tuesday the sessions will be devoted to Sweden, on Wednesday, there will be two sessions about Sweden, a session about Iceland, and a session about Finland. Thursday will be devoted to Norway, and Friday will be devoted to Denmark. Dear Myrtle will be starting up a new study group for the recently published book Mastering Genealogical Documentation by Tom Jones. The sessions will be held at noon Eastern on Wednesdays starting September 13th. The last session will be in January. All these webinars, Dear Myrtle Hangouts, and lots of other free webinars can be found at the calendar at geniotopia.com. And while you're there, consider making a donation to help defray the cost of the podcast. The calendar also has events going on in Second Life and online events that you pay for. And that's it for this episode. You can send email to geniotopia at gmail.com. You can find links to things mentioned in this show in the show notes at geniotopia.com, as well as a transcript. The transcript can also be found in the Geniotopia Flipboard magazine, and you can find the recording on YouTube. This is episode 106. Thanks for listening. 